Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. Today I thought I'd have a chat about, uh, I caught up with someone today, uh, his name's Andrew Fanden. He's a, a local renovation guru. He's basically done hundreds of renovations. And so we're having a bit of a chat about yeah, our journeys and what it's taken to get to where we are. And we were talking about whether it's possible just to fast track it and get all that knowledge and experience and just sort of get out there and start, you know, he's doing you know, 20, 30 renovations, he's doing a year. So that's a lot of renovations he's out there doing at, at any one point in time. Um, obviously, I'm out there doing developments. And I'm, hey, Isaac, thanks for joining. I'm doing developments and helping people do developments as well. And we've sort of taken our own journey, but we've sort of, a, we focus on a particular thing that we've got really good at, to be honest. And so Andrew's thing is, is renovation. So he can basically look at a site and you know, just walk around after 30 seconds and know exactly what's possible, what he can and what he can't do, and how he can get in there and get out within like a month and renovate a property and make it profitable, and just turn them over and make profit out of doing renovations. Whereas, to be honest, most people when they're doing the renovations don't make any money in my experience, and a lot of people, they, they don't necessarily do it the right way or approach it the right way. And quite often when people do make money, it's probably just out of sheer luck. You know, the market's gone up at the same time they've done a renovation. And then they go, wow, I renovated and I made all this money. But in reality, if they hadn't have done the renovation in the first place and they just bought it, wait for the market to go up and then sold it, they would have made similar sort of amount of money without all the hassle of renovating. So what you need to understand is to get good at anything, you really have got to, got to, you've got to, you've got to give it time and you've got to practice and you've got to push yourself, you know, to build up the skills, you know, which having chatting to Andrew, he's you know, he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars developing those skills on courses and training, and he's travelled around, just trying to learn from the people that have done it before. Similar to me, I've gone off and done. Uh, I've calculated once it was over five thousand hours of training that I've done to get to the point where I am now, and so you can't you can't get there without learning along the way. But to be honest, all that training doesn't really account for anything. All that is really is an insurance policy because. At the end of the day, you won't really know until you give it a go because everything in theory seems like a good idea and everything in theory seems like it should work out, but it's not until practice when you actually put your own money on the line. Hey, Asley, thanks for joining, that you actually know whether you know it's going to work out. And the problem is, unfortunately, you learn by trial and error. And every time you make a mistake, you'll learn. And unfortunately, though, next time you do another development, you're going to make a different mistake. And over time, you make less and less mistakes because you're learning from each one. The important thing is to get that information up front when you're starting out. Um, in Andrew's case, what he does is he um, obviously does his own developments. He helps people do um, renovations as well, but he also sort of mentors as well, just sort of holds people's hand through the process. And what that's about is just giving people a bit of a safety net, you know, giving people the confidence to know they can push themselves past where their comfort zone is because the problem, or not the problem, but the thing is, you know, until you push yourself past where you feel comfortable, you don't really know where that level is. But the benefit of someone that's done you know, hundreds of developments or someone that's done hundreds of renovations, if they've, they've experienced all those things. They've learned by trial and error. So why go out there and try and reinvent the wheel when you can get someone to try and help you out through the process? So I just thought it interesting. And you know, if you, you use it in a metaphor as far as a, you know, if you go to the gym and you're lifting weights, you, know, you can't expect to grow you know, big and strong and muscly without, you know, Pushing yourself to failure to a, to a degree, I suppose. You know, and that's that's how people build muscle. Really, is you you're lifting weights that you basically can't lift, just just a fraction more than you can actually lift, and then you you push your muscles to failure. Essentially, that gives them point. But you don't push them so hard that you're going to damage and injure it. You push it to the point where you've just pushed it past where it feels comfortable, and then you sit back and let it rest, and you recover, and you you. Muscle was basically regenerate and build stronger for next time. So next time you go to lift weights, it'll be able to lift a, little, lift a little bit more. And what you do is push it a little bit more again. And then you just drop back again and relax. And then you build it back up again. So each time you lift weights, you're pushing it past the barrier you got to before. And then you pull back. And then you push past the barrier where you got to pull and you pull back. The key is not going out and going, you know, trying to lift way more than you possibly can. Because you're just going to injure yourself. And the same sort of thing goes with whether it's doing developments or renovations or or um, you know, just investing in general, I suppose, or anything in life in general, really. You've got to push yourself a little, par little bit past your comfort zone. It's good to have a safety net. Likewise, if you're lifting weights, you know, what they have is, I don't know if you've ever been to the gym, but you have someone called a spotter, someone sitting there just holding the bar. They're not taking the weight of the bar, so you're lifting it all yourself, but they're there as a safety net. In case something goes wrong, they can just help you through and help you to push that whole weight through um, and push yourself to failure, and then they can take the weight when you fail, and they're there... There's, there is a backup, and so that's what a, a mentor or a coach or a, you know, 
someone's giving you guidance, holding a hand along the way. They're not out there to do it for you. They're there as a safety net. So if things go wrong or if you're not sure about something, you can fall back on it. They've got your back and then they can you can regroup and then start again and just build from that. So I just thought I'd share that with you today. I thought it was really interesting to to hear from someone that done, you know, had a lot of experience, had a lot of you know, knowledge that they could pass on other people. And at the end of the day, everyone's starting from the same point. You know, Andrew's not any smarter than anybody else, and I'm not any smarter than anybody else. It's basically we've just done it a lot. And so, unfortunately, you know, until we get out there and do it a lot, you're not really going to be able to build that experience. But by having someone behind you that can support you and guide you through the process, it just gives you that confidence to push a little bit harder than you otherwise would. And that's how you can improve, and that's how you can get better. And that's, with the world of property, that's how you can make those bigger gains that your average person can't because you can take on that slightly a little bit more risk than everybody else, which means you can reap the rewards and reap the benefits. And and with someone covering you or someone um, giving you a lot more confidence than you otherwise would, then it's probably not so risky because you've got someone there um, just making sure things don't go wrong along the way. So hopefully that's made sense to you. Hope you understand why it's important to have you know a mentor or a coach or someone in the background that can guide you through the process. It's not about them doing it for you. It's about them just sort of being there to to help you or to guide you and to, to cover you if, if things, you know, if you, if you start to doubt yourself or you, you're worried about the best way to go forward, they can, they can help you push past that, that concern, I suppose. So hopefully that's made sense. If you've liked what I had to say, then click on the like button. If you haven't liked what I had to say, then still click on the like button anyway, because I really appreciate it. If you know someone's thinking about getting into development or renovations and they, they just don't have the confidence to, to push through, then just perhaps share this video. Hopefully that'll give the confidence to know, hey, well, you know, it's about just getting out there and doing it at the end of the day. The more times you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And so if you've experienced that in the past where you've, you know, pushed yourself past where you feel comfortable and then you've you've retreated, but you haven't gone and pushed yourself a little bit further again to try and learn from that, then, yeah, put a comment in the comment box. I'd, I'd you know, love to hear about your experience. And if you've got something you want me to talk about in a future episode, then, yeah, put a comment in there. I'm happy to chat about that too. So thanks, guys. I look forward to talking to you again next time, and I'll see you later. Bye.